What's up, it's your girl Sasha Banks, the legit boss. You are watching Going In Raw. You like that? Hey, friendos, the Enforcer here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. Taped live here at the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson. Available on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson and all of your major podcatchers. Uh, Larson, I yeah. know it's not the typical Steve that you're used to, but the enforcer's here because it's Bama's birthday. Happy birthday, Bama. Happy birthday, Bama. And Steve, I'm falling on this grenade for you, my friend. So you are welcome. Because Miz <laughs> got the briefcase back, I guess this is my end of the bargain showing up here. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> here we are. You have to are, the, suffer through the three hours of Raw tonight. And yes, what a three yes. hours it was beyond the first 15 or so minutes and some, you know, little things here and there. Yeah. Not a typically, not tip, not a terribly newsworthy episode of Raw. Um, yeah. Elimination Chamber yeah. starting to take shape. Yep, yep. There were, we got. I think we got three matches set up from this Raw. Yep. Um, and uh, we had one kind of return, but it was sort of a high and bye. And, um, yeah. And a li- yeah, I didn't quite get that. Yeah, let's talk about um, this. So it's going to yes, be in the please. thumbnail. It's going to be the title. Uh, you know, WB thinks Shane McMahon still pops numbers, so hopefully Shane pops numbers for us too. So after uh, the mysterious disappearance of Raw Underground, Yes. Uh, Shane O'Mac is back, um, and he shows up to help Adam Pierce, uh, uh, s- you know, say, hey, the main event of Elimination Chamber is a chamber match where Drew McIntyre will have to defend the WWE Championship. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, he comes out. He kind of just is involved in the announcement. It wasn't even his yeah. idea, according to him. According to him, it was yeah. Adam Pierce's idea. Um, and Adam Pierce uh, says, all the people in the match, and Shane just like says, great idea all right see you later and leaves yeah and yeah then, he said uh, he just says hey it's a great idea um 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 i'm, I'm pr- proud of you i think he said some, something to that effect hey, like you're doing, yeah. doing a great job and then he just saunters out and then aj music's hit and, and then we're off to a, to a commercial but let's just real quick go with the six people that will be in this elim- elimination yes. chamber match so you got drew defending it uh, against all former champions. That mm-hmm. was something that they harped on a couple of times through the show. You got Randy Orton, you got Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, The Miz, and Sheamus in there with Drew defending his title. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think from the end of the show, I know we're kind of moving back and forth, just from the end of the show, it seems like those three that were in at the end are probably your front runners to either retain or capture the belt at an elimination chamber in my oh, yeah. mind at least yeah yeah i mean yeah. we thought we were done with uh with edge and orton given what happened last week yeah i still feel like we probably are but that being said you can't you can't look past the possibility that uh, however slim the chances may be wb might put that belt back on orton to do orton edge at mania Kind of yeah. feel like it's it'll probably be Edge at this point. I'm kind of really leaning Edge Drew in terms of what they'll actually do if they were yeah. dead, already set on Edge challenging Roman. Well, he would have said something already by now. I kind of feel like based yeah, on yeah. The, the 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 ratings numbers we got from last week, where SmackDown was actually down. Um, if they were looking yeah. for a ratings pop from Edge being around, I mean, last week Raw was the show of the two that was up a little bit, um, right? And, and honestly, that, Raw needs him more, much yes. more than SmackDown does. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, yes. uh, you know, later on, Edge says, "Hey, given the announcement tonight, um, uh, I'm going to push on my my decision until after yeah. the smoke is cleared from Elimination Chamber." Uh, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't, I would, would expect him to declare until like after Fastlane at this juncture because I'll probably yeah, be of course not. Um, at Fastlane for either Roman or Drew or yeah. both. Um, and so, and Bianca showed up on Raw tonight. Uh, yep. Asked by Charlie if she had made her decision. She as as well pushed, said no. Yeah. But there's a little bit of interaction between her and Oscar. So uh, yep. I feel yep. like yep. more than usual, they're really leaving the door open for the Rumble yep. winners to face whoever they want. Um, 
I which mean, I think is honestly very good because I never liked it. I think the last couple of years, well, like even in the ring, like when Sh- Shinsuke won it, immediately said, so who, is, who, who, who do you think you're going to be? And then immediately he says AJ Styles. I, I'm glad that they're sort of slow rolling this a bit, which makes sense. Maybe, maybe we can get a bit of long-term booking where you know it's constant i know shocking i know but it could it be that they actually have a game plan just for mania season where they actually have an idea where and where and how they want to place these bits that they have and they're just planting seeds and hopefully the seeds will finally bear fruit later on the closer we get down to mania you know that's the great that's a great analogy i've been using the the, the different pots on the stove and you're yeah. waiting to turn one yeah. on and on, to boil and the, and the others off if you're not going to use them they decide which pots to turn on to boil maybe now yeah. they're starting to prepare their meal they're hoping it's, it's time consuming one it's one of those meals that takes all day to cook yeah it's going to take hoping. a while it's all day it's thanksgiving it. d- delicious dinner. yes it's yeah me delicious at the end of the yes. day and not absolute trash um i don't know how shane's gonna work into any of this maybe he was like i'm in, <laughs> I'm in tampa i ain't doing anything hey i just happen to be there <laughs> dad can i be on raw sure um yeah because it seemed like there was really no point to him being there other than to to, to pass the blame on the chamber match onto yeah adam pierce and it seemed like he had uh, other plans because his two spots were right at the beginning after the first commercial break and the car was running as he was cutting that one with Drew yep. in the back. Yep. <laughs> he, he had places to go, to but he felt yep. obligated to stop in for a minute. He a had a, a, pressing, a pressing dinner reservation. Absolutely. At, at 8.20, he had to get to. Well, let's. What, how about we just dive right into it? Let's uh, go for it, man. show opened up with Adam Pierce. He's in the ring. Uh, he introduces Shane O'Mac. Uh, he comes down, says it's great to be back. They're on their way. To chamber, of course, he says about road to WrestleMania and something about a double yellow line and some stuff. I don't know what, yeah. trying, what point he was trying to make. Anyways, he's there to announce a blockbuster announcement. Uh, and then Pierce makes the announcement. Uh, yeah. Drew will defend uh, inside the chamber. Shane's like, well, who else is going to be the match? Pierce, <laughs> happy you asked, Shane. Uh, they're all former champs. You mentioned, Enforcer mentioned them earlier, Orton, right. Hardy, Styles, Miz, Sheamus. Uh, yep. And Shane was like, hey, you're doing a hell of a job. This is a great yep. idea. It's your, all your idea, and he just leaves. Um, yep. and just so. out, yeah. And then, you know, in chat here, L- Lucifer saying there wasn't even a mention when AJ came out with uh, almost there with AJ, not any sort of ign- acknowledgement or anything that they used to have anything to do with the Raw Underground. The homie was back from the Underground, but yep. homie couldn't, couldn't had no, no, nothing to say to him. Yeah. Like a fist bump or nothing, damn. Yeah, it was weird because they they obviously gave AJ and Shane a bit a bit of a moment because they walked past each other on the ramp and mm-hmm. AJ kind of gave him a little stare because obviously AJ and Shane have quite yeah. a bit of history yeah, themselves. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Uh, Amos was the bouncer raw underground. Yeah, he and Shane used to chat up every week. They seemed friendly. Yeah. Nothing. And it was like nothing. It's like I have I don't know who you are. That was weird. <laughs> that, that was weird. That was a shame, man. So yeah, uh, yeah AJ's walking down. He walks past Shane. And he just tells Pierce, "Hey, you're doing a hell of a job." I like your idea. Chances of Drew losing or, or the title are phenomenal. And at a perfect time to road to WrestleMania, I could be right. a three-time champ. Uh, he tells Pierce, hey, I don't want to say this too loud. I always thought you were kind of a dumbass. But hey, uh, Amos and I are going to give you a snippet. What can you expect the chamber? Out comes Jeff Hardy. He's going to have a match with AJ Styles tonight. Yep, yep. And then at that point, we go to commercial, and then we have our uh, we come back from commercial, and then we got Shane trying to uh, uh, bounce out of there. But then mm-hmm. we see Drew, Drew walking up there, and he says, uh, um, "He says I was hoping we would get a heads up." Uh, uh, but then Shane said, "Hey, it looks like they wanted something bigger for Elimination Chamber than this you and Sheamus." So that's where we got the six, where the the match will be, uh, uh, your title will be defended. Uh, in the elimination chamber, real quick, the car is running. Shane's got places to go. He's looking at his watch and he's trying to peel out there. It's, it was so weird, it's so weird. Like, hey, Shane, just pop in, pop yeah, in real quick. It, 
but why? It made no, uh, yeah, whatever. yeah, it made it made no no sense. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Obvious. Yeah, then we got yeah, then we got AJ and Hardy there, and um, I will tell you, my notes are a bit bare, but I know AJ was working that knee all he the was. way up until that first commercial. Um, uh, Jeff Hardy was a bit um, uh, distracted by uh, Omos in the back, and then AJ gives him a chop block. That leads us to the first commercial, mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. we're back, and then AJ still working that left knee, mm-hmm. and then that's that, that that's where I'm at. Oh, then I I'm at a point where there was a uh, AJ try to f- finish it off with the phenomenal forearm. Jeff sort of makes a lunging attempt at the ropes, knocks him down, and then he gets the advantage. Uh, mm-hmm. Jeff hits a twist of fate, but he misses. No, he hits it, misses the senton. AJ rolls into a calf crusher. Jeff tries to fight it off, get to the rope, can't get there, middle of the ring, tap, tap, tap. Correct. That's it. AJ gets herself a win over Jeff Hardy. So uh, uh, math two weeks out, does it even apply? Is Jeff going to win that title? <laughs> no, no, no. I think the two people with the lowest odds of winning that match are probably Jeff Hardy and then The Miz. Yes, um, yes. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, Drew's got to be tops. Yes, yeah. Drew, Sheamus, Orton, probably Drew, in that Sheamus, order walking Orton, out of the chamber. Yeah, then, then AJ. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It seems like AJ hasn't been like uh, uh, since he got to Raw, nowhere near the t- title scene. We well, had that. I one think he may have had a match. For, yeah, at TLC he against had, Drew. That, that TLC against Drew, but that just seemed like it was f- filler more than anything. Like well, I never, I didn't think that was the one where Miz yeah. tried to cash in, but Morrison won the hand of the briefcase, yeah. and so it was kind of yeah became a triple threat match so it kind of got lost in the shuffle and they didn't do anything else really with them after that which is kind of odd no not 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 at all not at um all. after that keith lee's backstage he's back which yep. is great yeah beautiful i loved it uh riddle walks up to him is like hey what's up and then lee's like oh my opponent for the night uh what happened to you what's going on with your black eyes there uh riddle yep. laughs and, or says laughter is the best medicine you know so i went home after my match with lashley last week Got toasty and watched all the Air Bud movies. He just names them all oh, off. Says, I'm feeling man. good now, though. Um, Lee tells him, well, Lashley may have knocked a screw loose. You sure you want to pursue the title? Uh, yeah, Riddle says, yeah, you know what? It was ridiculous what they said to that dog when he wanted to play basketball. But you know what? He did it, and I could beat Lashley. And Lee says, well, maybe it's time for someone else to take on Lashley. You've already lost like yeah. ten times. Right. I, Keith Lee, have what it takes to beat Lashley, and I'm going to beat you tonight. Matthew Riddle, and, and right. Riddle does a uh, well. Let the better man win because you know right. they're supposed to be friends. So yeah, yeah, but it, it, it seemed like um, I know that Keith Lee has really had, in, and even in NXT, he had that slow talking rhythm to him. Mm-hmm. But this one just seemed a little bit clunkier than it usually is and i'm not blaming keith lee and riddle i just think the stuff that they were given probably the script was it it's like air bud like how how new of a reference is is an air bud i know, I know. you know and and it's like uh um hey i pro- probably it was the match of the night riddle and keith, keith lee oh, really that was, to me was, really was a good match and i'm glad that they had to give some reason for them to to be fighting and if it had to be this then fine i could have had to be over air bud and so be it yeah then fine yeah they should have uh, uh, Riddle should have mentioned Russell Madness that a uh, wrestling movie that dog wrestling movie with John Morrison in it. <laughs> it would have tied everything and, together. And more there. timely re- uh, reference, perhaps. Absolutely. Um, so after that, Sheamus is backstage. He rolls up to Adam Pierce. He's complaining about not getting a one-on-one match. Uh, Pierce is like, "Yeah, I understand." Sheamus is like, "All right, I'm sure you do. Are you telling me I'm not a draw?" And Pierce says, no, they're looking for the best main event possible for Elimination Chamber. We think that's it. Sheamus says, well, it's your fault um, for this match is happening. That's what Shane said. You're just yeah. full of broken promises. Drew is the shiny new toy, but he'd be nothing without Sheamus. Uh, he says, well, if I'm if this Chamber match has to happen, fine. But yeah. when he's unleashing brutality on every WWE superstar in that match, remember, it's all your responsibility, Adam Pierce. Yeah. And and I, you know, uh, fine, whatever, for how close you are. But, damn, do you really need to be that close to a fool's face as you're cutting those last three or four s- sentences uh, that you got right in Adam Pierce's face? I know. But I get it. You're trying to show int- t- intensity. You're upset at this situation. But, okay, I, I get you. Yeah, and then, man, 
uh we get to me was probably the oddest little bit here uh new day versus t-bar and slapjack with ali on commentary and the commentary ali was giving i didn't quite understand where he was coming from with all of this anger and just he just sort of kind of took away from the match Hmm. And I don't know if he was supposed to be taken away from the match. I was distracted by him, what he was doing on on, on commentary, mm-hmm. mostly. But I know that he was trying to get, get over that. Uh, uh, um, uh, to me, I was thinking, man, he was just airing grievances over and over and over about this thing. Uh, ta- ta- talking about eating and that re- re- retribution is hungry. And then this one, that one part when uh, T Bar was out there and he looked back at him, it's like, "You're hungry, you're hungry, get after it." And then in my mind, all I'm thinking is like, uh, "He's hungry, so he's thinking Arby's." <laughs> that's that's really all I that I was. Or oh, they've been watching uh, being the elite in uh, say uh, uh, Die Jack Hungy. Yeah. <laughs> Start flexing on people. Yeah, um, but, yeah. I mean, all, but that's yeah, been kind of Ali's thing for a while. Is is you know he's been he's he's taking it. He wants to go after Kofi because Kofi took his his potential WrestleMania opportunity yeah, from yeah, him. Yeah, this is probably the most vocal he's been on commentary about it. Uh, all the stuff about, I mean, he, he was he was very uh, consistent in terms of saying, "Hey, they've eaten, they've had their opportunities, yeah. they've had their title opportunities, they've had their championships, they've already come back for seconds." As in, there have been multiple time champions. You're hungry. You need to go eat now. Um, the weird thing about a lot of this is is retribution is for the most part completely hapless. Yeah, they suck. They're not good. They're bad. No, not and, not and at all. Kayfabe speaking, like yeah, you yeah. Know, they're actually all really good wrestlers. They really they good are. Performers. They are the way In that kayfabe, they're booked. They're terrible. They're, they're terrible. They're, kayfabe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and so it, it, it's it's like a repeating. It's almost uh, comedic at this point where where Ali is saying, "All right, now is the time for retribution to do this." And then he, during the match, he's like trying to encourage them best he can in his own way to win, to yeah. to see through his vision of retribution. In the end, usually they lose. He goes in the ring and berates them like like he's yeah. surprised that they lost again. <laughs> um, it's but just, then it seems like every week it's just a rinse and repeat with them. It it's is. just sort of he'll just yell. He'll tell them to eat. They'll They'll somehow, you know, lose it. You know they'll be on a roll, and then he'll say, "Come on, and you know eat," and then and then they 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 cough up the football, and then he gets in there and yells at them because they lost. And it's yeah, just like, it's, I, th- yeah, yeah, it's getting by yeah, on it, on on Ali's Ali's charisma. You know, uh, yeah, uh, with a lesser performer at the, at the at the front of Retribution, this yeah, this would whole thing would be way worse than what it is. They I mean they dropped the ball. On retribution from the very beginning, but if if yeah. Ali wasn't the you know out in front leading them, this could be way worse than what it is. I don't even know if there is a way collectively with them still being re- retribution where you can salvage them and look at them and go, ah, absolutely, these guys you know can be a threat. Like if they were to fight New Day for a tag title, if or 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 whoever it may be for championship, there's a championship opportunity as they call it. Yeah that they would win it and go like that makes all the sense in the world. I, I could see that the way that they're booked. No, yeah, absolutely no. not. I know. I know if they didn't where it came out of nowhere that they'd suddenly just win a title and be like, all right, well they've been garbage for the last six months. I mean, it all yeah. goes back to yeah. when they first showed up and they, they blew up a transformer and they were celebrating like it was new year's day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and they were in times square and I'm like, this, this, there's nothing, there's nothing cool about this. There is you nothing, know? yeah. And they and come then, in, and this they... dude's got a chainsaw and cuts the ring ropes. I was like, All yeah, right, cutting ring deal. ropes. I'm like, okay. Hats off the creative creativity, bringing a chainsaw in the ring, but really, you're just yeah. cutting the ropes. All right, that's really not that. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. nice. And then, and then there were like 18 million of them, but none of them were the size of a di- di- Die yeah. Jack or, yeah. or 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 a Dio Madden mm-hmm. or anything like that. I'm just like, okay, very well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys are just here to eat pee and pins then, huh? All right. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happened. And that's what happened here. Uh, fun match. Uh, in the end, uh, New Day get the win after hitting Daybreak on yep. Shane Thorne, Slapjack. He is the official yep. pin eater of Retribution. Yes, he um, is. Fun match, though, because 
Dijak and Shane Thorne are both really good wrestlers. Uh, they are. So Ollie gets in the ring after yelling at him from commentary the whole uh, the whole match. He's like, what do I have to do? Meanwhile, Xavier Woods is on the ramp. He's still calling out Reckoning. He wants his match against Reckoning. He says, yeah, give yeah. me my match with Reckoning. Give it to him. Which I doubt is going to happen, but one could hope. <laughs> um, after that, a brief little bit of Damian Priest and Bad Bunny chatting it up backstage. Yep. Uh, Priest asked Bad Bunny, if he's going to be in his corner for his match tonight against Angel Garza, Bad Bunny says, I will. Yeah, you got, I will, you got it. So before we continue, and for Steve, you're back. Hey, what's up, man? Listen, Larson, you know me. I'm totally okay missing Raw, but I'll never miss an opportunity to talk about the sponsor of today's show, Raycon. Let me ask you something, Larson. Huh? Doesn't it seem like we're both constantly just staring at screens, whether it's getting work done at our computers or keeping up with the latest goings on on our phones, unplugging from the world, it's nearly impossible to do. That's true, Steve, but I'll tell you what, when I'm looking to rest these eyes of mine but still get the content that I need, I put in my Raycon wireless earbuds and catch up on a podcast or listen to an audio book or listen to the freshest jams to help fuel my workout. Yeah, man, I wear my Raycons when I'm out running, getting my wind sprint on, and I can tell you these Raycons are built to perform anywhere and anytime. With water and sweat resistant construction, they feature seamless Bluetooth pairing and offer up enough battery life for six hours of playtime. And Raycon makes awesome audio accessible to everyone with wireless earbuds starting at half the price of other premium audio brands, and they come in a wide range of colorways and always have a comfortable in-ear fit for a more discreet look. And right now, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products to Going In Raw listeners, and here's what you gotta do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash raw. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order, so feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash raw. Buyraycon.com slash raw. All right, man, I'm getting out of here. Let's bring the enforcer back so we can finish up this raw review. Get back to this raw recap. All right, bye, everybody. All right, let's talk about this Ric Flair, Lacey Evans promo bit with Charlotte. Um, Can can we start uh, yay or nay on that suit that Ric Flair had? I mean, I, I don't think I could pull it off, but I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't think I thought yeah. Miz's pink suit was suit of the night. I thought that that was looked else. amazing. That that was that else. looked awesome. I really did didn't like that Ric Flair suit. I really did did not like that, that, that like inlay a, that that he had in it. Paisley kind of like inlay or something on it, right? Yeah, yeah, I did, and like that, that that was the only bit that had any sort sort of reflective color. And then the rest was like a like, like a matte like finish, a, right? Yeah, matte matte finish to it. Um. I wasn't really feeling that that suit, um, but yeah, Ric Flair would be a guy that could pull that that suit off. Yeah, you put that thing on me. No I, I'm I could, not. I'm not so sure. Yeah, no way I could pull no. that off. Um, so at first, Rick uh, talks about his relationship with Lacey. He says, yeah. "I'm training her. Our relationship is casual." He says, "Casual." Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, not sure what that means yeah. about how casual it is, but okay. Uh, so he says, uh, "I'm here to get." Uh, Give notice to Asuka. Lacey's been the next champion. Lacey's talking about how she respects Flair. She treats Flair like a legend, unlike his ungrateful daughter. Charlotte is a fool for turning away Rick. Uh, Lacey says, I'd never speak to my father the way Charlotte spoke to Rick. Charlotte comes out, interrupts. She walks down the ring. Uh, There's this nice little bit where Flair is about to walk over to kind of, uh, uh, you know, push the middle rope rope, down so Charlotte can get in the ring, and Lacey grabs him and pulls him back. Yeah. Um, and then Charlotte uh, tells, uh. yeah, Charlotte tells Lacey that if she wanted to l- learn, she should go to the performance center, work there. Instead, she goes to Rick, wears my robes to enhance her career. And then she says I uh, to Rick, I never said I didn't want your help, but for the last seven years, I've been protecting, enhancing our legacy. Uh, I don't care who you manage. Just don't bring me down with you. And then later on, she says something like, uh... Uh, oh, like I've been trying to prove to to you, Dad, and to everybody at home that I can do this on my own. And I felt that was a bit contradictory. It's like I never asked for your I, – I never said I wouldn't take your help. At the same time, I'm trying to prove I can do it on my own. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there there were times where it says – um where she said, like, um I never said that I didn't want you around. But I can recall many a times where she's 
talked right to Ric Flair after a match and says, I don't need you here. I don't want you here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that was uh, that that was a red flag, too. And I wasn't sure if Charlotte was supposed to call Lacey Evans Charlotte 2.0 because that means that that's an improved version of a Charlotte. <laughs> I don't think that was how she was supposed to mean it. But I understood what she meant. Yeah. But I don't think she was supposed to use 2, 2.0, though. Yeah, I, I don't think that's the right uh, verbiage. Uh, so yeah, anyways, long yeah. story short, uh, Lacey says that if I beat you tonight, Charlotte, then uh, I get a, I get a challenge Oscar for the Raw Women's title. And, Char- and Charlotte's like, all right, sure, let's fight now. Uh, Rick's like, no, don't fight now. Lacey then uh, hits Charlotte with the microphone, tosses her in the ring steps. We're going to have the match. Before that happens, though, Miz and Morrison are talking to Garza backstage, uh, and they all saying, we don't have to worry about Bad Bunny at all. Yeah, we ain't got to worry about him one bit. And then, uh, yeah, Lacey Evans versus Charlotte. Yeah. Um, yeah, it gets, she, she gets the uh, jump on. Uh, Lacey gets the jump on Charlotte, um, uh, uh, working over her shoulder by, before I believe they go to break, throwing her into the steps. And then that was uh, um, that that was basically what was going on, working over uh, of the shoulder. Um, then uh, Charlotte dumps Lacey out. Lacey grabs Ric Flair. Charlotte... Uh, uh, hesitates um, um, on the ring apron, mm-hmm. and then Lacey goes on, sweeps her legs out. She she ends up donking out there in the in the, uh, in the ring. Um, I'm kind of lost here a little bit. Uh, oh, I know. Then, when I start taking a bunch a, of notes, I'm like, all right, where, where, where what, what's it, what's important? What do I need to talk about? And it kind of gets yeah, lost exactly. And, just, and then uh, I know that uh, after birds. Lacey took advantage, they went to commercial. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they came back, Lacey was still working that advantage. The one thing that I liked was that uh, jump up uh, moonsault that Lacey did in the corner, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where she was on the second rope, jumped up to the to the top rope, and then did did the moonsault there. But then caught knees. Um, there was a botch in the corner where that was uh, weird. Uh, yeah, Charlotte uh, Irish whipped uh, um, Lacey to the corner. Lacey ran to her with the camera behind Ric Flair, and then Charlotte hesitated a bit, waiting for Lacey to do something, but mm-hmm. nothing happened. Mm-hmm. And then Charlotte just kind of just slaps Lacey, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay. V- and Byron very tried well. to sell that as like, oh, Charlotte hesitated because her shoulder hurts or something like that. He tried yeah, to cover yeah, that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and then um, after that, sort of, uh, they go into the other corner, and then Charlotte uh, uh, is just hit, hitting away. Referee tries to break her up. She puts hands on referee. Referee says that's a DQ. That was ding, ding, ding. Ridiculous. That's stage. it. Um, yeah. And then, um, the, but the one part at, at the end, I, I'm sure you have notes on this one, um, where she's basically, you know, putting the big circle around saying, this is my ring. This is my ring. And then over with Rick. Uh, saying, hey, you're going to lift these ropes now? You're going to lift these ropes? And he doesn't. But then the referee comes over, lifts up the ropes. And then uh, that that's how that one ends. But a uh, couple of um, botchy spots there. Uh, um, um, but I did like the sort of advancement of the story of, is Ric Flair the one in charge of this relationship mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Lacey Evans? Mm-hmm. Is Lacey Evans riding the coattails and actually – manipulating Ric Flair because it's in a feud with his daughter. I did kind of like that advancement a bit, yeah. You know, I thought about it. What Charlotte should have called Lacey was not Charlotte 2.0, but Wish.com Charlotte. Wish.com Charlotte. Wish.com. So I want to talk about about this finish of this match for a bit. So the the stipulation was, if Lacey wins, she gets matched with Asuka. And during their, their, their back and forth in the ring prior to the match, uh, Lacey was talking about how she'd be a better tag partner uh, for Oscar than Charlotte, and Charlotte was like, "No, I'm b- I'm better tag partner. Oscar's my partner, not your partner." Yeah. But you know, Lacey was up front saying, "I'm going after the Raw Wins title," and Charlotte was like, "All right, fine, go ahead and do that." Um, yeah, which is weird. It's, it runs kind of counter what Charlotte said, I think, like two weeks ago. And then with this match, having that stipulation that if Lacey wins, she gets that title shot, you'd think Charlotte. Would maybe I understand the finish here? She got like out of control. She got upset, yeah. so she just started uh, beating the heck out of her uh, in the corner. Same time, by getting DQ'd, she like gifts Lacey yeah. a title shot, and I'm like, that just, doesn't make any just sense. Hands it there. No, I understand it doesn't. You want Lacey to get that title shot without pinning Charlotte, of course. Yeah, of course. So 
you got to come up with but, some DQ finish but, that makes zero sense. But yeah, that but yeah, that really makes it. I mean, always. Then, if that was the case, if Charlotte is so about a tag team relationship with Asuka, why was she ever in the Rumble? Why was she ever in any of these things? You know, and then, mm -hmm. and if that, and if that was the case, saying like, "Hey, Rick pulled some strings to say if I beat you, then um, I'll go on and um, and uh, uh, meet up with Asuka." Mm -hmm. And if and if Charlotte is what she is, always looking for that championship. Why didn't she say, well, you know what? If I beat you, that puts me in line, and I could talk with Oscar and see if we could work something out oh, sorry, as sorry. a face, you know? Yeah, yeah sorry. Spideyville, I had it backwards. Sorry. Lacey was saying that she should be Charlotte's teammate and Oscar, not Oscar's. My bad. And then Oscar was nasty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah then so I th think Rick – and then Rick said, like, yeah, why don't you guys team up? You guys should be team. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I think that – I think, once again, that sort of plays into the Rick thing where it's like Rick just wants to be involved – and then finds a way, like, yeah, here's with Lacey. I can I can be here with Lacey, someone who really looks up to me. And then I, I can also hang around and be a part of my 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 kids, yeah, uh, 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 career as well. The best yeah. of both worlds. So that's yeah. I, he seemed to jump on that extremely quickly. Yeah, I think that's what uh, Rick Char wants. Charlotte was having none of that. He wants to help elevate Lacey while maintaining his relationship with his own daughter, Lacey is yes. trying to make the, their relationship a bit more ag antagonistic. Yeah. 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 So Anywho. hopefully that is what it is. It sort of gets fleshed out a little, little more. That's one of the, one of the handful of beats that I did see advanced through that I would actually like to see. So once again, it's those morsels, those little nuggets. You got to find, you find in raw through three hours. You just got to sift through, you yep. know? Yep. Uh, yep. After that, Edge comes to the ring, drop a promo, talking again about his massive decision. Who is he going to yep. challenge at Mania? Um, he says, I got to dig deeper to make my decision. That's why I came to Raw last week. Uh, he says, also, I want to finish up my business with Randall Keith Orton. He said he came face to face with all the champs. He was close to making to his decision. Then that chamber match guy announced, says there is a few things he knows. Roman Reigns is champ. Mm -hmm. Finn Balor is champ. Elimination Chamber is a brutal match, but what he doesn't know is who's going to walk out of that Chamber match as champion. He says, i got to be a realist at this point in my career. I don't like Drew's odd of walking out of Elimination Chamber. He says, I should know. Uh, so it doesn't make sense for him to make a decision until after Chamber and all the smoke is cleared. Miz, Morris, and Angel Garza, they interrupt. Uh, Miz says, hey, Edge, your speech really reeked of awesomeness. He says, you've always <laughs> been the ultimate opportunist. Uh, you're waiting for your moment to strike. I, the Miz, have been more of a strategist, so let's strategize. If you're, if Edge, your comeback leads to a title win at Mania, I'll be there with Money in the Bank, I'll cash in on you, and I'll leave Mania as champion. And Edge's like, do you know who you're talking to? Like, I know a thing or two about Money in the Bank, you know, and uh, you know, like I'm thinking on a whole different level of you than you. You pretty much told me your plan. Yep. You're, you're playing old maid, and I'm playing poker. Um, he says, Miz, you're content being awesome. That's something I did 20 years ago. Um, I need to see my story through, and that means I need to be champion. Think about that, Edge. He almost yeah. gave Miz cry face. Almost. almost. And, and the fact that like Edge basically does a mic drop, walks away, and the uh, Miz and um, Angel Garza, I'm sorry, Morrison and Angel Garza wanted to do something about it, and then Miz is like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, and I was just like, man, um, he just basically, like you said, gave him cr cry face Ed edge at that point. He said that he's on a higher level than Miz as well. I thought that was a good, good line edge. Once again, man, like uh, bringing it. And, and once again, a bit of a morsel of something that was a quick hitter. But but man, I, I was enthralled. And now I really do want to see who he actually is going to uh, uh, fight at mm -hmm. WrestleMania, um, because the, you could honestly Realistically, you give him another week making the rounds again, and all three of them are extremely viable, extremely oh, yeah. realistic. And and you could go, yes, I could see him fighting Finn Balor. I could see him fighting Roman. I could see him fighting Drew. That's what you want. Yeah, That's exactly what you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if they can find a way to build up the intrigue to an extent where you're sitting on the edge of your seat waiting to hear who he picks – then agreed, and and I hope they can do that. But just based on the interaction so far, like the most intriguing matchup, I don't know if you feel the same way. Enforcer is is mm -hmm. is Drew because their their uh, interaction last week felt the most tense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I really 
dug what he did at NXT, mm -hmm. standing in between Pete Dunne and, uh, and Finn. But I think that was just a one-shot deal for him to show. He was in NXT. There he was. Mm -hmm. um, Roman won. Uh, it seemed to upset Roman more than anything and advance a Roman storyline with yeah. KO and possibly something else. But once again... Having that carrot always there, I could I could see him rolling back in there and saying, "No, nah, it's going to be you, yeah. absolutely." But yeah, Drew would be, and once again, you need some heavy hitters there on Raw. You need people. You, you need that storyline to keep going and and have people coming and having to watch Raw. You know, and and if you put Edge on there on SmackDown, he's just one of a, a, a handful of people already on a loaded two hour show. You got you put right. Edge on the show, give him three, four, uh, se not se se segments, but appearances on Raw every week leading to Mania. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd love it. Yeah, agreed. No, I think I think Raw and 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 taking on Drew is the way to go. Yeah. Uh, next, Raw's newest rising star, Damian Priest, uh, Damian had a match Priest. against Angel Garza, and if not for Miz and Morrison constantly trying to distract Damian Priest. <laughs> This would have been a squash match. However, yeah. they did do that. It wasn't a squash match. Bad Bunny got involved a little bit. Yep. Uh, grabbed the Money yep. in the Bank briefcase at one point. Toss it in the ring. Morrison runs in to pick it up. The rest sees him. Was like, "Hey, you're in the ring with Money in the Bank briefcase. You, you're out of here. Yeah, you, you and that other guy. You're yeah. out of here. Out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> so, meanwhile, now Garza's distracted by Bad Bunny. He starts talking yep. crap to him. He turns around. Uh, uh, Priest gives him the bell clap, pressure of the ears, one of my favorite moves in all wrestling. Oh, man, I love it. Follows it up with the reckoning to get the W. I'm really happy they're treating Damian Priest uh, like a superstar because that's what he is. Yeah. Did he do an NXT? I know he did the one where he, when he did his intro and turned back and he shot his arrow and, mm -hmm. and his thing mm -hmm. lit up. Did they do the same thing in NXT with the one over his head? Cause that, uh, cause like when that one was legit, where they shot the camera like you know with him real elevated, and he looked up and then shot up, and then there the D the D Damian Priest lit up again. I was like, that actually looked nice. I don't remember honestly, cause I know they okay. did have the Tron above the ring. They yeah. had that next T for a while. I feel like they have yeah. done it, but I could be wrong about that. I could be mistaken. We got yeah, White, White Brownie saying, start. no, they didn't. Then Zero Cool saying, yeah, they did. Lucifer saying they have. Okay. All right. That must have been the first time that I caught it, but that, that actually looked legit. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Absolutely. But, yeah, like you're saying, guy's been, you know, sh big uh, big appearance at the Rumble, put, putting him with ba ba Bad Bunny, so he's going to be the most viewed clip again this week on, mm -hmm. on, a, on YouTube mm -hmm. for him. And, yeah, they're just – they're they're – they're positioning D uh, D Damian Priest perfectly. Yeah. I like yeah. where it's going with him so, so far, man. Absolutely. Same. Yeah, he's a super talented dude. Yeah. Uh, after that, we have a Drew McIntyre interview. He's asked about his reaction to the Elimination Chamber match. Um, he says it's mania season. Expect the unexpected. He said, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the whole Sheamus thing. Yeah. If Sheamus uh, just wanted a title shot, he could ask for one instead of throwing away our friendship. But he says, that's not my focus for now. My focus is Randy. He understands the bullseye in his back. He's larger than ever. This chamber match thing is happening. It's, you know, it's easy to think he's back in the corner. He's like, hey, I dare y'all to come get me. Yep. Uh, I'm after, a wild animal. Dare uh, you to come get me. After yep. that, uh, they announced <laughs> that Oscar versus Lacey Evans was made official yep. for Elimination yep. Chamber. Yep, yep, we got that. Um, um, I, I don't want to talk about predictions already, but uh, there's no way that Lacey's getting that bell, right? Yeah. I would be, okay. I would be shocked, shocked. That would be the manic pick if uh, if you were picking that one. <laughs> with a high, yeah, with a high degree of confidence. Yeah, that would be high a degree manic of pick. confidence. Yeah, yeah your Lacey Evans, confidence five confidence points. What the fuck you smoking? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and hit again. No, yeah, yeah. Not, not that one. Uh, after that, Bianca Belair interview. Um, she's asked, hey, hey, how will uh, what chamber match? Oh, the chamber match between Oscar and Lacey Evans affect your decision? Uh, Bianca says, yeah. you know, a smart challenger never reveals her cards. Says, I might challenge Oscar. It might be Sasha. It might be Lacey Evans. If I want to be the EST of WrestleMania, uh, I'll have to be the best. And the Oscar steps in, congratulates her. Says, but it doesn't mean you're ready for Oscar. 
uh, Bianca says uh, she's definitely ready, but Lacey isn't. They're having a laugh yep. about that. Uh, Bianca says if she handles her business, if Oscar handles her business at Elimination Chamber, that Oscar might be seeing more Bianca there on Raw. There you go. Would yeah. Would you like to Would Would you like to see Oscar versus uh, B- Bianca? Would you rather see uh, her versus Sasha? Where, where 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 would Larson prefer to see uh, who would you'd like to see Bianca? I mean both both fight. matches I think could be really really good. Right. Uh, I don't know. Like I feel like Oscar's incredible. She's one of my favorite wrestlers on the yeah. entire planet. Yeah. I feel like if you want Bianca to get a surefire win at WrestleMania, then it's probably going to be at Oscar's expense. I think if it's yeah. Bianca versus Oscar, Bianca's for sure going to go over. If it's Bianca yeah. versus Charlotte. Or sorry, Sasha. I'm less. I mean, I still feel like to 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 come to the natural conclusion of the story they're trying to tell that Bianca would still have to win that match. I'm yeah, just less certain yeah. about that. Yeah, it it just seems like I I absolutely love Oscar. Oscar is is somebody even before the p- pandemic where she showed how much of a superstar she was mm-hmm. and how valuable she was. I loved Oscar. I loved Oscar in NXT. Oh, she was love so good. absolutely awesome. And I always hate. That she carries the rainwater up until they get to the big moments, the big event, and then she has to drop it beforehand or she doesn't get the big win on the mm-hmm. main stage. Mm-hmm. I would just hope that if if I prefer her I prefer Sasha to fight Bianca Bit Belair, because I think Asuka would have a bit better chance. Not a good not 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 a clear cut win. But a better chance at retaining the Raw Women's Championship. Yeah, I mean, the, the, then the, the if the story, she were to sorry, fight ahead, Bianca. Yeah, sorry. No, no, that, that was it. Um, I feel like if they want to tell the best story for Oscar, it's beating Charlotte for the title at WrestleMania. Yeah, that's yeah, the exactly. story because that's like she's never been able to beat Charlotte. Yeah, at, on a large she, stage like that, like defend the title. I think she might have absolutely. Beat her once. I mean, she lost her undefeated streak to Charlotte. Mm-hmm. At WrestleMania, mm-hmm. what a better v- vindication to get that win back, and then that can also leave you to the point where, hey, they're one and one at WrestleMania. You can come back two, yep. three years later, when both of them are, are well, they're both su- superstars, but they, you know, they they can go away for a while from each other, and then make that match even b- bigger than a blow off match w- would be. You know, you got that right, man. Yep. Uh, after that, uh, probably the match of the night, Riddle versus Keith Lee. Yep. MVPs on commentary. Uh, kind of went as you would expect, but it's still pretty great with Keith Lee overpowering Matt Riddle every chance he gets. Uh, Riddle would hit a flurry of offense here or there. Uh, Lee would just, you know, kick out at one. Um, yeah. Uh, at the end, he hits a, a pretty huge spirit bomb to get the win. Uh, afterwards, Bob Lashley comes down the ring. He clobbers Lee from behind, follows with a, pr- a damn impressive spine buster on Keith that Lee. That was amazing, yeah. Uh, puts Riddle in the hurt lock, ragdolls him around the ring a little bit. Uh, then Lashley knocks Lee to the floor, hits him with a clothesline, tosses him into the ring post, and then uh, knocks him over the announce desk with the ring steps. It was announced later yeah. on that we're getting Riddle versus Lee versus Lashley for the U.S. There. title. Yeah. At Elimination Chamber, that should be a hell of a match. Uh, Absolutely. I'm, yeah, uh, I'm really happy they're getting Keith Lee in the U.S. title scene. Uh, I think a one-on-one bout between him and Lashley would be damn incredible. Um, and I, it'd be great to see him walk out of WrestleMania as U.S. champ. I hope it happens. Don't know if it's going to, though. Absolutely. Um, to go back to this match, MVP on co- commentary was amazing. He was putting over Key- Keith Lee. He called him a kai- kai- kaiju, but Lashley is king ka- kai- kaiju. Uh, constantly put over uh, um, the the, mm-hmm. the feats of strength that Keith Lee was uh, d- doing there, and also at the end uh, when Bo- Bo- Bobby just left both of them laying, standing on top of the co- commentary table, just looking like a million bucks, just looking just yeah. amazing with with that belt. Yeah, I, that that could be a match of the night on Elimination Chamber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd love to see just I love the pacing that Riddle and Keith Lee had in oh, this yeah. match. 
Uh, love that they gave it some time. Love that they introduced introduced Lashley into this, made it a tri- triple threat once again. Mm-hmm. It looked like MVP still cannot control Bo- Bobby Lashley. He's just along for the ride. That's what mm-hmm. it looks like, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward forward to that match. Absolutely, that should be good. That should be a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, after that, Randall Keith Orton promo. Talk about unfinished yeah. business with Drew. He wants the title back. He wants to walk into Mania as champ. That's pretty much it. Um, that was it. <laughs> That's all I wrote for this promo. It said unfinished business. That's what he just said. Unfinished business a couple of times. I said, okay, unfinished business. I got you covered, buddy. Got you covered. <laughs> uh, after that, we had a Nia Jax and Lana Tables match. I guess he, we, given the stipulation, and the fact that Nia put Lana through a table nine times, you'd think Lana would win yeah. this match, and she did. Probably the highlight of this bout, though, is when Nia misses a leg drop on the apron yeah. and shouts out, <laughs> yeah. my hole. Yeah, yeah. That's she pretty said, funny. My, my hole. Yep. That was that, pretty darn that, funny. That right there was a great – uh, and she hit hit and she tried to hit her with a leg drop and mm-hmm. and that and that that late leg drop looked great she said my my hole before that she called Na- Naomi a trick they blurted out something else too uh, uh the, the audio cut out in the middle of a match yeah she was ta- that talking too. trash to Lana and then yeah she said the my, my hole line and then Lana comes up behind her shoves her into a table that was propped up halfway between the uh, uh halfway up and it was up uh, leaning up against the uh, uh barricade mm-hmm. that's what let her and it was so devastating she was not available to she had to be rushed to the back for for mm-hmm. aid because mm-hmm. all of a sudden we had a Shayna Baszler and Naomi match pop pop off uh when we came back from commercial <laughs> it could and, be. Oh, um, uh, Stevens J and Gareth says uh, it's that Naya said uh, Trin to... Trin! Uh, oh, I thought I heard Trick. Which is, if which it was is Naomi's Trin, real that's name. fine. All right, yeah. The whole... The, my whole bit was... was You could definitely hear that. <laughs> she yelled, my you whole... You could definitely hear that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, after that, Shayna hits the ring. Uh, Naomi gets in to kicks her out. They have a match next. This one was pretty short. Uh, yeah. Shayna got distracted by Lana on the floor. Beat her up a little bit, tossed her in the barricade, and when she gets back in the ring, Naomi rolls her up. There's this cool yeah. spot where Shayna set up Naomi for the 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 arm stomp bit. Yeah. And as Shayna brings her foot up to stomp on it, Naomi kips up. Kipped up, yeah. And then and yeah. Shayna knocks her back down just to stomp on the arm again. That was really. And they hit her really again, great. yeah. Yeah, that's ba- that's basically what I had there too. Yeah. So we could just <laughs> that's that's what we had. That was that was I I I always laugh at. How a Raw or a SmackDown, how many roll-up schmozzes end up happening there because someone gets distracted. It just seems like um, that is an old trope, an old, you know, we don't know. We can't write our way out of this thing creatively. We don't have the time. Mm. What can we do? Roll-up. Distraction, roll-up. Distraction, roll-up. Uh, they get the that, win, with us, but it's not like a definitive win. Yeah, yeah. It's getting to the point almost like with uh, you uh, uh, hating when people are selling and adjusting gear or, or Steve looking at the ref on a counter, me, mm-hmm. somebody in a tree of woe, and you're holding the things. Now we're getting to a point where a, a roll-up <laughs> is a thing where I'm just like, dude, you got to be kidding me here, man. Yeah, the distraction roll-up. Yeah, that's kind of the worst. Yeah, yeah. It's get, getting bad. It's getting bad after that. Main event. Main or, event. Randall Keith Orton Thankfully. versus Drew McIntyre. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, for like the umpteenth time in the last 365 days. Uh, this was a decent enough match. Uh, early yeah. on, Sheamus comes down to ringside, acts like he's going to run in, puts the brakes on, doesn't. That uh, distracts Drew for a bit, allows Randy to get yep. the upper hand. Uh, he has that for a while. Drew hits an overhead, two overhead belly to bellies, goes for a future shock. Orton blocks that. Drew kicks out, hits a spine buster. He gets a two. Uh, Orton hits a superplex. That gets him a two count. Drew responds with nice. a headbutt. Uh, Orton responds with a draping DDT. Sets up for an RKO. Instead, Drew escapes that right into a future shock. And then Sheamus hits the ring. He tries yep. to bro kick Drew. Drew dodges that. Sheamus kicks Randy, and then Drew hits Sheamus, uh, Sheamus with the Claymore. He grabs the WWE title. He's holding it up. Yep, he's holding it intense. up. 
and then off we go. And then then I saw Stone 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 Cold. You know, yeah, man. You know, and I was like, oh, it's time time to do the uh, review now. You said you. Yeah, it, <sighs> I did it. I got through all three. I hours. did it. I made it. I made it. But yeah, I mean, for w- what it was, it was a fi- fifteen mi- minute match with a commercial in there with Sheamus lurking out on the outside. Yeah, you kind of knew where it was gonna go. You 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 knew that it wasn't gonna be anything clean. It was gonna be a schmoz, which it yeah. was. Which it was, yeah. Um, and yeah, so um, obviously, like I said earlier in this thing, one of those three is either gonna retain the title or pick up the title mm-hmm. at Elimination Chamber. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, more likely it's gonna be Drew holding on to it. Yeah, I think. So I too. think um, if there is anything, yeah, you could have Orton there, and then Fiend show up at the end. Or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Or she- Sheamus wins it. Drew challenges again, gets it back at fast lane if they wanted to do that. But yeah, you could do that too, maybe. Yeah. I, yeah that's probably the it. the lo- longest of those three shots. But um, if they could do it if they want, want wanted to do something. Um, they but, could, yeah. I mean, again, I think this chamber match is is another uh, chapter in the story of Drew learning to become champion. Yeah, um, and so it makes all the sense for him in the world for him to walk out of there. Uh, Absolutely. Still. And then maybe at Fastlane they'll do Sheamus versus Drew one on one. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. very good with what you say with uh, Drew basically learning to be a champion because ever since he's he's had it, you know, he's been in a Hell in a Cell match, been in a TLC match, mm-hmm. been in all of these other variations of mm-hmm. matches that he can, and he comes out on top. Oh, the you, you know the 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 old timer comes out he beats him as well so they've been laying groundwork for every every month there's a new hurdle that he clears Mm -hmm. i like the way that they're actually doing that so yeah the stories the stories they're telling with drew has been been pretty good you don't get those huge uh you know like omg moments like oh my gosh this is like shocking what they're doing that's just not how WWE writes stories anymore but you know the the progression of of drew's story since he won the title almost a year ago well i know he he Lost it to Orton briefly and picked it back up, but for the better part of almost a year, he's been champion. Um, you yeah. know the 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 story beats have been solid. So uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's it. been it's been sort of tried and true uh, things where for a face heel, he faces adversity, he overcomes mm-hmm. it, and every every month it's a little different. And uh, it, but yeah, it's still b- believable because you look at Drew and you're like, yeah. This man is a champion. This man has the look of a champion, the feel of a champion, talks yeah. like a champion. But, yeah, he just has to learn by by doing, and that's what he's doing, and I'm all for it. Absolutely. It's Definitely. almost like what happened with Roman early on where, you know, but this is much more b- b- believable where they would put hurdle upon hurdle upon hurdle. But with Drew, I'm willing to actually believe it and accept it where it seemed like it was being – completely forced to us with yeah. Roman. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. yeah everything about, about Drew's title reign has felt relatively organic as opposed to Roman, as you mentioned, which just felt like, oh, we, we need to get him over. Let's put obstacles in front of him. But you, yes. at no point did you feel like he was going to fall on the face of those obstacles. He was always yes, going to yes. overcome. You know? Yeah, it, it always seemed like, like Drew is capable of not clearing this hurdle, but his fortitude and what he's learned mm-hmm. in these months – has got him mm-hmm. to uh, this point of knowledge and knowing how to 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 clear these hurdles. So yep. I'm I'm, re- I'm really digging it. Absolutely. Same. Same. You yeah. want to answer a few questions, Enforcer? Absolutely. I can fire up the uh, p- Patreon, Sounds which good. you can go on and leave a message to uh, to Stephen Larson at the one dollar mark at p- Patreon. Um, and of course, there are other tiers. There's the five do- do- dollar tier Friendo Club TV exclusive content, all that good stuff. Monthly Matt chat, the fi- fifty do- d- dollar one, you get that exclusive T-shirt. So Patreon.com sh- support Stephen Larson. One dollar gets you up on this thing that I'm about to fire up, though. There you go. Here we go. I'll start with the Twitch here. Jorge D. Vince gave you guys unlimited budget for WrestleMania entrances this year. Uh, yeah. Who would you get? Who would get the special entrances, and what would they do? It's Damian Priest, all in on the vampire thing. Uh, you get the entire cast from what we do in the shadows. Uh, yes. Um, and so they, they wheel out a bunch of caskets, 
And so you do a thing on the giant Tron where the sun sets and the moon comes up. And you get a bunch of fog that, that, that comes into the, the, the arena. And then one by one, they open up. And first, you know, it's Matthew Barry. And then, and then it's, you know, all the cast members. Guillermo's <laughs> there, too. There. The energy vampire is there. And then finally, <laughs> it's Damien Priest kicking yeah. the song. He does the, the arrow thing. They all walk down the ringside with him. That's, that right there is, is a, a celebrity uh, thing in WWE that I would be 100% behind. Oh, man, that right there would be great. Um, I don't think I have anything close to that, but I would honestly, uh, if I had unlimited budget, I would have Otis running a food truck sort of or, 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 or Mata there on the hard cam side, where as you roll out there, you can go on and pick up all of these different foods, all of these tastes of Tampa that's going out there. Oh, that's good. That's 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 what I would have, and then the smells would be amazing there. All the money on the food budget, prime there rib, go. galore, bone and fillet, all that succulent, succulent, succulent. There you go. Um, I got here uh, James Fletcher here. Which '90s gimmick wouldn't work now? And and uh, not allowing Godfather is too I- easy. Which oh. '90s gimmick <laughs> wouldn't work now? Take Damn, all, all of them. There's a take lot take your work. pick, yeah. Like yeah, you could never um, do Val Venus now. You could mm. never do Val. Um, um, I know he wasn't the ni- ni- '90s, but Eugene, you could never do now. Um, you, oh man, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot. There, there, there are a, a lot. lot. Um, I don't, I, I don't think you could have a guy that's called called Mister Ass. Um, no. Boss man, yeah, bo- boss man says night, 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 night by night because he had the uh, Confederate flag on one of mm-hmm. his shoulders there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, night by night, what raw superstar would you most trust to sell you a high quality name brand attaché case for an extremely reasonable price? Whew. Oh man, who would I believe sell me a high? I I'm think gonna... Xavier Woods would probably give me a reasonably priced high-end attache case. That's what I would say. That's I would good. say Xavier Woods. Um, yeah. I, I'd be tempted to say The Miz, however, it would not be reasonably priced. It'd probably be super no. expensive. And if so he I'm gives say... you the one that he has, it's got big dents in it, man. I, know. So I don't know. I'm going to say that Otis. Um, Otis doesn't live the extravagant, extravagant uh, lifestyle that The Miz does. He has experience carrying around uh, briefcases. Um, yeah. So if, uh, would it be high quality? Eh, it might be soaked in like uh, meat juice. Yeah, it'd be meat juice sitting in there, man. It could be brand name, <laughs> but it would be extremely reasonably priced. So I'll take two out of the three and be content with that. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Vegan Squirrel with 500 yeah. bits. Thank you so much. So, oh. Ooh, Larson and Enforcer. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Vegan Squirrel. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. My number one cheerleader, Vegan Squirrel. Thank you so much. Uh, Fat Bastard Champ Alex Foster, if not the Andre Battle Royal, what does Retribution do at Mania? Pretend you have to give them something. Um, Ali versus Kofi makes a ton of sense. Ali versus Kofi, I'd love to see that. But like the other part of Retribution... Um, I'd love for them to somehow hijack the, uh, Tron and jack up a couple of, uh, in, 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 in tr- like out comes AJ, but mm-hmm. then all of a sudden there's the, the un- un- undertaker and he's freaked out from last <laughs> year's good. Bo- bo- boneyard match or something That's like great. that. That's great. That's a great idea. That is a great yeah. idea. Uh, I give Maggie that. says enforcer purposely yeah. botched the review a little bit. If you do g- too good of a job, Steve might make it permanent. I'm trying my best to 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 botch this. I'm not gonna go Jeff Jarrett at ba- ba- Bash at the Beach and just lay down, <laughs> but you know I have to make it look good. You gotta walk out of here with your <laughs> dignity still. I know I have to. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Casual Fox, could you see a Big E versus Omos feud in the near future? If not E Lashley, I just really miss good Haas matches. Um, I, don't I don't know, know how, how many. Sorry, yeah. go ahead and force her. Sorry, I, I don't know how much seasoning and how much ring uh, uh, awareness and work that uh, almost has. I mean, he's a big imposing figure, but I don't know how much that translates to actual in-ring activity. Yeah, yeah, 
That's exactly what I was I just say. don't. I, don't I just is. don't want a gi- gi- giant Gonzalez si- si- situation or con mm-hmm. uh, um, or Kali. Ka- Ka- sorry, where it's just chops and just you, just everything just looks awkward. So if he's got exactly. the chops for it, I'd love to see it. But if he doesn't, the spot that he's in now is good for him right now. I would say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and if he can use this spot he's in and learn, you know, whether he's going yes. at the performance center. I I hope that he's he's sitting backstage picking AJ's brain, yeah. Um, every chance he gets, um, that 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 would be the one guy that I'd be sitting there and hopefully you know mm-hmm. with Ke- Keith Lee there. Hopefully he's made mm-hmm. friends with Keith Lee as well. Mm-hmm. I would absolutely love to see you know give him a year if he actually is training to see where he's at. Now mm-hmm. I'd feel if you put him into something even in six months. I wouldn't want to break his spirits in having bad matches out there, and exactly. that's the first impression you have it of with him. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Uh, White Brownie, if Edge can mention and show up at NXT, why can't Bianca? Uh, part of, the, I think, the reason Edge went to NXT because he's never been there, and he says watching NXT was one of the things that motivated me to come back. Yeah. Bianca is, what, a year and a half removed from being in NXT? Yeah. Yeah, I I don't, I, I don't and and it seems like she has really skyrocketed since she went to the main roster. Mm-hmm. Edge sort of going to NXT like you said just f- f- fulfilled a bu- a bucket list item and really got the uh, 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 the hardcore fans popping when they got to see him in NXT. I don't really think you're going to be seeing Bianca going back there if she had a. A, if she was more prominent on the main roster for a couple of years and she that the NXT title was missing from her, her hardware case, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. But now I think she, uh, for her to go there, it doesn't quite make sense. Yeah. Um, uh, I got uh, Greg, Gregory Faea said, since I know how big fans of Shane uh, you guys are, did you sigh when you heard his music? Uh, yeah. Actually, well, uh, I, had it, he, I had it spoiled for me first. I saw it on Twitter that he showed up, and I'm like, so I sighed then. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, when I when I heard that music go out off there, I was like, oh, man. And I was wondering, they're going to tie up loose ends? Haven't seen him since Underground? No mention of Underground. No, None never of existed. that. Never And existed. then, yeah, he just sort of showed up and then left. And honestly, if that was all he did... I'm glad, and that's all that he did. I'm glad it wasn't three or four segments of I Shane know. back there now in charge again. I know they have a I'm tendency. Glad it to, was what it was when they bring but Shane it seems back. Sort of have to dominate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's the best in the world. Oh, Although I that gimmick, course. I really did like though for a minute. <laughs> I did like that for a minute. <laughs> uh, this is a good question from Dang MQ. Which non wrestlers do you want to see as cardboard cutouts at Mania? Non wrestlers, um, anybody and everybody who was uh, who, who's a celebrity that made an appearance to WWE. So Hugh Jackman, hey, Drew Carey, Kevin Federline, Snoop, Snoop Dogg, um, um, uh, Ashton Kutcher, yeah, uh, Mike at 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 Mike at, at Adam Lee from uh, American <laughs> Gladiators. He makes a comeback. He oh wow. Up. He was not Cena, very but he's Cena, but he is tr- translucent. It's yeah, it's just the <laughs> yeah, like the the vacant uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. figure they use for for uh, pictures and such. Kaufman has it right. Robert Stack, a whole section of the Stack Man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you All go. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, wow. Let me just- Flash Rain, yeah, go for it. This in real quick. Uh, Flash Rain 24, just a stat I'll share with you. Out of the last 15 Raw tag title changes, only two have been won on pay-per-view. That seems else. correct. That seems like a belt that they would swap on Raw because, honestly, how often is a tag match on a pay-per-view now anyway? It's usually yeah. on a kickoff show, yeah. if anything. Yeah. Uh, Dog Authority figure here has got a question for me. It says, uh, are you uh, tapped by Elon to pilot uh, the colony on Mars? <laughs> what six, oh, I'm tapped too. What six wrestlers do you enlist to join you on, their spa- on the space adventure? 
and what are their titles since Space Enforcer is already in Taken? Okay, um, I am going to take Xavier Woods as engineering. So he's my Jordy LaForge, Mm -hmm. super smart. Um, Data, since he's already basically a robot and the way he acts is a Cena. Yeah. All right. Uh, My number one, uh, my my big... That's going to be AJ to prove that he has no more questions about the Earth being flat. He sees oh, that it's rounded, good. and he falls in line. That's falls good. in line finally. Um, let me see. That's three or four. Okay, uh, Worf uh, can be uh, Biggie. Um, let me see. Riddle because he's probably growing hy- hy- hydroponics in space. He can be uh, uh, um, uh, out there. And one more, give me Rio Ripley just to be cool. There you go. All right, there you go. (laughs) Uh, Dr. Lipkin says, we hear if he wanted a title shot, he could have just asked all the time. Has anyone ever just asked? I feel like Champion's friends asking for a title shot and being rejected would make a good story. I mean, that's how most title challenges are in New Japan. They just say... yeah, New Japan, they just let's come just, out and say, hey, that was a good match. I want to wrestle. challenge you next. Yeah, yeah let's wrestle. Which is effectively, do it. I guess, asking for a, for a, a title shot. So, But it, yeah, WWE it doesn't seems, really happen at all. It seems more like, you know, even a heel will come out and say, you know, I got my eyes on this belt, whatever. But in, in here in, in, uh, in, in the States, it just seems like you beat the shit out of somebody and then now you're in line to, to get a, t- a t- title shot. Yep. You know, so, ooh, I need revenge on them. Where it just seems more, you know, respectful. Like, you know what? Good job on that win. I'd like a crack at that. I, I'd i actually like to see that happen, you know? So someone just comes out and is like, hey, I respect you. I, I want to fight for that belt. See? That makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, says, uh, sorry I'm baked here. Says, uh, when in the hell did Miz and Morrison add Angel Gar- Garza, Garza to their subpar um, S show? Uh, obviously a shit, shit show tonight. Uh, tonight tonight was the night tonight's the night that's tonight's what it was do, yes. do you think that that continues uh, if it does it only lasts up until mania if uh, it's Miz and Morrison versus Priest and, and uh, Bad Bunny that's okay I get you I don't think it's a long term thing uh, the intern Christopher Kaufman yep. says enforcer who's the mid carter mm-hmm. you want Wanted to get some upper card rub, but never did. A mid carder, you wanted to get some uh, uh, some time up in the in the upper card main event, even maybe, but never did. Mm, rude. I wish Rude would have gotten some some. I wish they would have like not botched him. I loved Rude <laughs> Rude in NXT. Oh, Rude next. I would have so loved. Good. Oh. He was so good in NXT. He was he wasn't a chi- ch- chicken shit heel. He was nope. a calculated yep. heel. He would he was an opportunist. Yep. And an opportunist heel would have been amazing to oh, see he him. So he is so d- damaged. You couldn't do anything to him now. He is no. so damaged. So no. rude. Nothing the main event. Would no be. Way. Would be it absolutely. Um. Uh. Do do do. Let's see. Then we got a bunch of people ta- talking about the uh, my my whole bit here. Say how how much did you pop? I loved it. I love that one. That was um, great. Uh, and then okay, so here's one that I'll take from Wolfpack for Life. Who should be in the other chamber match? I hope it's the Intercontinental Belt with Big E, Sami Zayn, Apollo Cruz, Shinsuke, Cesaro, and That'd be great. and uh, Brian. That'd be great. Um. Um. Would what would the I, I'm just, instead of picking six, what other ch- chamber match would you like to see on the show? We got one for Raw. I'm figuring one would be for SmackDown. Would mm-hmm. you like to see the IC belt, or would you like to see a w- women's sh- championship in there? I think the ice the the field for the IC belt is is intriguing, and it, it you know it either advance the story of Sami Zayn or or give you know much in the same way they have with with Drew. Big E, some serious hurdles to overcome to establish himself as champion. So I think in terms there of advancing you story, you know. There you go. I mean, it seems like for Sasha, she's walking to Mania as champion. And it's either going to be against Bianca or assuming Bianca challenges Asuka. I would assume Bailey then. 
Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I would assume. You know, just whatever whatever match would advance stories the most and be the most intriguing, that'd be the yeah. one I'd want to see. I'd honestly like to see um, if they were to do an IC belt, I'd love to see it just how Wolfpack for Life said. Mm -hmm. But honestly, uh, if they were to do one for a Raw women's one, I think you just did, did say it that I'd like for it to be a number one contender match to mm -hmm. place somebody in in a good position to be believable for the ch championship match at WrestleMania or a fast lane. Yeah. That's what I would actually li like to see because other than Bailey, what other ones could you Im immediately say, yeah, that is b b believable that you have that, that belt on SmackDown if it is for the ch championship. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, if you didn't want to go with Bailey or you wanted to put some more steam behind Bailey, you could have her win it. But if you wanted to have someone else um, put into a position, I think that would be a way that you could do it. Yeah, definitely. Shane's birthday tweet with some bits says, uh, "Some advice for you, Enforcer. Audibly fart yeah. on camera like a AAA and don't speak until they play your music, so Steve doesn't have you come back." That all sounds like <laughs> reasons that we would have you back. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, I I don't know if I want to do it like uh, Ma Maggie said earlier. I don't. I think I just want to like start screwing up here now, so that that leaves the impression of Steve going, "Oh damn, man, I can't, can't take a night night off," and then I don't got to worry about Raw. You know? <laughs> it's like, oh, why we, can't it be NXT, you know, yeah, we, or SmackDown here? Man. No, we we wouldn't. I I, I wouldn't want to do that to anybody. Like, oh here, I don't want to do this anymore. So. We're gonna have someone else come on and take my place. Mm -mm. I'd feel miserable. I'd feel horrible about doing that. To somebody, no way, no way. Oh man, um, I'm done with the ones on pa okay. Patreon we'll, here, and we'll I appreciate all you guys. Remember, one dollar a month at Patreon, you can get all in the, in there. Not just on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, all of uh, them. all of them, everything except yeah. for Impact. We don't do Impact reviews. Correct, uh, Jonathan. Is Bad Bunny growing on anyone else? I thought uh, his his appearances so far, dude's got charisma. Yeah, he carries himself like he belongs out there. Um, yeah. I don't get the sense that he is is nervous or doesn't know what to do. Um, everything he does makes sense, seems natural. Uh, I, I've actually been really enjoying Bad Bunny thus far. I think it's as far as bringing celebrities onto WB programming already. With three appearances, it's been one of the, one of the more successful ones. Yeah, I didn't know him from anything beforehand. Um, I, I didn't didn't know his music or anything like that. That that wasn't anything any slight. It's just I did, didn't know anything from it. Um, but um, I have enjoyed his his um, his appearances. Don't feel like he's ta taken anything away. And honestly, he's put Priest in a good position mm -hmm. to put a shine onto him. And I completely appreciate that, and and I love a, a priest, and and if and if B Bunny can get him clicks and get Curry favor for a priest in the back, I'm all for it. Absolutely, you got that right, man. 100. percent We'll end on this one. Theo, yeah. third anarchist with the sub. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank Theo you. Theo says six months, friendos. Give me your top six pizza toppings. No six pizza toppings. Well, all right. Okay. Uh, enforcer, please. Okay. Okay, so um, mine is probably going to be mostly veggies because normally I don't like meat on uh, on my pizza. No, number one for me is mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Mushrooms all day. Give me all the mushrooms. Give me everything there. Two, if I have to, because normally it's just cheese and mushroom. That's normally just my go-to. Mm-hmm. After that would probably be um, uh, olives. So I'm going to go two with olives. Three, then I'm going to go banana peppers or mm. pe pepperoncinis. Good choice. Okay. Four is going to be uh, um, onions. If they can, uh, saute them Brilliant. beforehand 100%. and then put it on there. I will go on and have that. Five... Then is going to be pineapple. Good man. I know that is a very uh, a po polarizing topic, but I will take the pineapple. And then six, uh, tomato. Just put some nice vine ripened tomato yeah. in there. Get a little heat. So on that's what I got: mushroom, onions, banana peppers, 
Onions, if they're sautéed, I'll take them. Pineapple, tomato. That's a good list. Uh, pepperoni, sausage, pineapple, onions, uh, uh, green pepper. There you go. Uh, what am I forgetting here? Pepperoni, sausage, pineapple, jalapeno, green onion. Or sorry, green pepper, onion. And then... Um, Mushrooms. There you go. There Mushroom. you go. And you see, everyone here is shitting on my list here because there was no meat on it. I'm sure because there was p p pineapple and onions and all that. I honestly, if you just give me extra cheese and mushrooms, that's all I need on a pizza. Be a happy man, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Happy man. Absolutely. All right. Well, Enforcer, I'm happy. We got to we gotta hang out for a bit. Chat wrestling, absolutely. chat raw. Thank you so absolutely. much for joining me. Yeah, is no that problem, man. Um, is that a shoot? Yes, I did enjoy. I can't do impressions I, I like did, Steve can. I did enjoy this. Once again, I know in the comments on YouTube, I'll probably get, get some flack because Steve's not here. Steve had to celebrate his da daughter's birthday. Give him a break, okay? I'm here. You get Steve tomorrow. Don't worry about it, all right, That's guys? right. Steve will be back <laughs> tomorrow. But also yep. tomorrow. Impact. Impact stream, baby. Watch along. Impact stream. Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson yes. starting at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 8 Eastern. Hope to see you all there. Watch some Impact, kind of, more or less, just chat. Yeah. Um, it's always a lot of fun. It's, it might be the, the highlight of my regular wrestling week now. Who thought I'd ever say that about Impact? But that might be the case now. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would Six have months it? ago, you would have been saying, I'm not watching this. And here nope. you are every week. Nope. The first one in the Zoom. Everybody, he's the first one in the Zoom oh, when I'm we get here. in here on Got Impact. Got my Impact shirt on. on I'm on Tuesday, he's ready. He's raring to go, man. I'm ready. He's, I'm ready. He's ready. That's it, man. Uh, uh, thanks again, Enforcer. <laughs> Thank you all for you watching. Got it, man. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you all later. Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye. Help support Going In Raw today by becoming a Friendo Club TV member. You'll get access to new bonus episodes every week, including Friendo Club Arcade, Live Power Rank, Vintage 10 for the Wins, and Ask Steven Larson. Get access to Friendo Club TV today by becoming a $5 and up patron at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson, by throwing us a sub at twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson, or by clicking join at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson.